So today we are making a tool stand for a tool. I use basically the same structure for all of my tool stands, except today we have a couple of obstacles to work around. Let me take you over to the tool and show you what we need to do. And today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. This is for a CNC, but you could apply these techniques to any tool stand. A couple of things that I have to work around is I need to be able to slide a couple things in and out. That is a chiller for the laser that I need to be able to move out. And then that is a vacuum for the vacuum hold down. In the back, I need to make some room for ductwork and I want to have two drawers for storage. I do know that I want my width to be 48 inches and I want it to go back 39 inches and the height is gonna be a little bit taller than most of my pieces. This is going to be just a little bit over 32 inches tall. Most of my tool benches are at 30 inches tall. And the reason I chose that for my other tools is that is a little bit lower than my table saw. So when I'm putting big sheets onto the table saw, I can set the back of the piece on here as I run it through the table saw that way, or my workbench is slightly lower than my table saw. So as the pieces come out of the table saw and they, they tilt forward a little bit, they fall onto my workbench if I need that added support. So the table saw is the highest tool in my shop and everything else is below that. This I want up higher for storage reasons and it's next to this, this big crazy laser, which we'll talk about in the future. And uh, I think it'll look good if it's, if it's up a little bit higher. And then the digital tools are up here. This stand wasn't made for this CNC and it wasn't tall enough, so I have it up on blocks, just like your dad's T-Bird out in the front yard. And it's a little, uh, yeah. It, this, everything is going to be made out of 5 8 inch birch plywood, except the drawers, which are going to be made out of half inch birch plywood. And we'll talk about the drawers when it's time to talk about the drawers. First thing we're going to do is cut all the legs. The width of these legs are going to be four times the thickness of your boards. So whether you're using 5 8 or 3 quarter, cut them four times the thickness. And I'll explain why that's going to make your life so much easier here in a little bit when it comes time to make the drawers. And we'll talk about the drawers when it's time to talk about the drawers. I have my fence set to four times the thickness of my plywood. This is 5 8 inch plywood, but you know how plywood is. It's got an attitude, so 5 8 isn't exactly 5 8. So I'm going to cut all of my leg strips now. I have my eight leg pieces cut. Next thing I wanna do is create this L shape by gluing them together. You can use clamps or you could use a brad or pin nail. I'm using a pin nail, that way I can quickly move to the next step without waiting for glue to dry. So we have our four legs. The next thing I need to do is make the two sides and we're gonna do that out of the same 5 8 inch plywood. So now we have our two side pieces cut. I'm gonna take this leg assembly and glue it to this side, and then take this leg assembly and glue it to this side, and then this will be one side, and then we'll repeat and do the same thing with the other side. And so we'll have two side assemblies. We'll talk about the drawers when it's time to talk about the... So now we have our two side assemblies. Next thing you need to do is cut the back and the stretchers for the front.
So we have the back and the stretchers cut. I have everything lying on its back and I'm going to glue and screw the back into place and then put the stretchers in up here. This is not gonna have a lot of strength until we get the top on. So you gotta be careful moving this off of your bench or in my case, moving it off of the table saw. So I'm gonna carefully flip this up this way so I can add some glue. I thought about not adding glue and just screws so I could take it apart if needed. This is just gonna have more strength. Number one rule in woodworking, always get the screw started first. Time to add the front stretchers. This first one is going to go flush with the top. And then this other one, typically I put towards the bottom, but because I have other equipment to work around, it's gonna go somewhere in the middle here. And again, I'm just gonna use glue and screws. To prevent racking and to flush up these two face pieces here, I'm gonna cut to fit two more pieces that will fit perfectly in there and in there. Such a good fit, you don't even need clamps. But woodworkers love overkill, so we'll use clamps. So now we're gonna make the drawers for this and the width of it is gonna be one inch less than the opening because each drawer slide is half inch thick. And we're gonna make that out of half inch plywood because it'll just be lighter, uses less material and a little bit cheaper. For the drawers, I'm just gonna pocket hole them together. You can just glue them together. I've done that quite a bit with my shop drawers. No fasteners, just glue, and that works great. But I wanna quickly move on to the next step, so I'm gonna drill some pocket holes. And I'm using the smaller pocket hole insert into the pocket hole jig, and this uses the smaller screws since we're just going into half inch plywood. All right, we just pocket hold that together and we're just gonna cut out a bottom and glue it into place. Doesn't need any other reinforcement. All of my shop drawers, the bottom is just glued in place and it works fine. I've got drawers with at least 100 pounds of tools and it works fine. And by the way, this is not how I would make drawers for fine furniture. This is just this, this is just ugly shop drawers, so I don't care about the pocket hole screw showing. I don't care about the end grain showing. If I was making fine furniture, I would. So, I could hear something funny going on with the miter saw earlier, and then there was this smell coming out of it. It kind of smelled like, like epoxy, like when you're mixing resin and it gets hot, it had that burn, burning resin smell. And then in the middle of that cut, it just decided it didn't want to cut no more. And so after that, I tried to turn it on and it would try to spin and then it would just choke out. Uh, that is my Capex. I've had that for a good seven years. It's way past its warranty. So I took it to an authorized seller and they sent it out for repair. Uh, you, you know, you expect, you expect the Festool stuff to last a lifetime. And that's what I did because it's the most expensive miter saw that you can get as far as I know. I love that saw. It has the highest dust collection rating out of any saw. Every single shootout that you will find puts this at the top of the list at dust collection. And that's why I prefer that saw. And it's, it's just, it's a nice saw. So I'm getting it repaired. 
So that sucks. That really sucks. I will let you know. I will let you know what happened. It's probably brushes. I'll let you know how much it cost and how long it took to get it back. <sighs> zoom out and then kind of zoom in, see if we can make this special. One, two, uh, before we continue on with this build, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for many, many years, long before they were a sponsor, and the reason is it is so easy to use. They have award-winning, beautiful templates. I use one of their default templates myself for my own website. I use their eBlast service, and I use their domain hosting service. I love Squarespace. Like I mentioned, I've been using Squarespace a long time. Let's say, let's say you are like me and you're a woodworker, you're a maker, you're an artist, you need a place to show off your stuff. Squarespace is the perfect place to do so. If you wanna have a password protected members area, you can do that. If you wanna have an e-commerce site where you sell plans to your projects or you sell your projects themselves, you can do that. Squarespace makes it super easy. There's no messing with the code or the cloud or any of that junk. You can worry about your business and you can worry about your own personal brand and you don't have to worry about messing with the back end of a website. Visit squarespace.com and when you are ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's get back to this tool stand. Dan, I'm gonna have you zoom out as I jump off. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the bottom here. And I'll line up one corner. Put a nail down. Line up the opposite corner. And put a nail down and it should square everything up. If it's not square, you can kind of force it square. So the reason we cut the legs at four times the thickness is we can take two pieces here and glue them to the side and that's gonna bring this out flush for drawer slides. In the past, I've just cut this at a random width, like maybe two and a half inches or three inches wide. And then I would find myself planing down a two by four to find that perfect thickness to make that flush. I have just enough leftovers from cutting all of these legs to double them up and glue and screw them to the side. To make life a little bit easier, I'm going to attach the drawer slide to this build out first and then screw and glue everything into the side. Drawers are a pain in the butt. That's a t-shirt. Drawers are a pain in the butt. So now I'm gonna attach this to the build out here and it's gonna sit a little proud. That way it is flush with the face frame. So I'm just gonna use an extra piece here and line that up. And then screw that into place. using a little bit of CA glue, a little bit of wood glue on the road course that I made here. And then I'm gonna glue these two pieces together and the CA glue is gonna dry almost instantly and will be a clamp while the wood glue dries. I got the build out all built. Now I'm just going to glue and screw it to the side. It doesn't really even need to be glued. I think screws would be good enough, but I am going to use some CA glue and some wood glue on there. The CA glue is just gonna hold it in place until I get some screws in there. And I've got a line drawn on here and I know to line this up perfectly with that line. And then I know that my drawer slides will be parallel. Activator, sometimes I get my activator and my spray adhesive mixed up. Not a good day. So I'll just eyeball it with that line. Have I ever told, which camera's on? This one, this one? Have I ever told you how much I hate making drawers? I'm always looking for ways to make it easier. So, so far this is working out well, but the hard part is yet to come. So I cut four pieces of two by four to the exact length that I need to hold this drawer up while we put on the sides. And we're gonna do the top drawer first, and then we'll set the top drawer on top of all four of these two by fours. And then when it comes time to do the bottom drawer, we'll cut these down to the size that'll fit the bottom drawer. So I'm gonna stick these in here like that. 
Then I will carefully set my drawer on top of them. So now that I got the drawer sitting on top of the two by fours, I'm gonna pull out the inside drawer slide just to the face of that. And then I am going to screw in this hole and screw in this hole, pull the drawer out until the next hole is exposed, screw in that one, screw in that one, and just keep doing that until we get all the way to the back. Then we can remove the two by fours and the drawer stays in place. Got the cheap drawer slides in there. No, no soft clothes, this is shop furniture. This isn't your mom's furniture. You're not making this for your grandma. You're making this for your shop. You don't need soft clothes for your shop. Hey Daniel, put on my list that I need soft clothes drawer slides for the shop. I'm gonna cut these two by fours down to length for the next drawer. I'm Johnny Knoxville, and this is Pocket Hole Joinery. I got my drawer faces cut, and I'm gonna edge band them with walnut. I don't like using edge banding, especially the iron on. I always seem to sand through it, and it just, it doesn't live up to my standards of woodworking. The trick to attaching drawer faces to the drawer is to drill out the holes for your handle first, but we're not gonna attach the handle. This is really cool. So now we can use these two holes that we drilled for the handle to take a screw and screw this into the front of the drawer. Once we had that screwed in, then we can open up the drawer put some screws behind there, take out these screws and put this on there. This is so much better than like the hot glue trick. Always screw towards your crotch. So now I can remove these front screws. I've made the face bigger than what you'd normally would just to cover up. This is a new look that I'm going for in the shop. So we'll do the same thing with the other drawer and then we're gonna add a piece of edge banding along the top here. Typically I don't put casters on my shop furniture, but I got a feeling I'm gonna to need to roll this one out every once in a while. And I got these casters, which are pretty cool. Unfortunately, they don't swivel, but I think that's gonna be okay. They are low profile casters, so they screw onto the bottom of the plywood and they only stick out that much. For the finish, I'm using this water-based polyurethane. It's made for floors. The reason I chose this is because it doesn't yellow. And when you put an oil finish on Baltic birch plywood, it yellows like crazy. So I wanted to keep this color and it's made for floors. So it should be very durable. And this is my first time using it and I'm pretty happy with the results. It dries really fast. It only takes like an hour to dry. Got the CNC sitting on top. I got the drawers installed. This is the chiller for the new laser cutter. And then I got the shop back for the CNC underneath here and I can access that as needed, but I don't want to see it. So I made this false door that's just going to hang on here. I've drilled a couple of holes in the back and now I'm just going to add a couple of screws. That just hangs on there. It looks like a door. I can easily remove this to get to the things underneath and then just pop this back into place. How freaking cool is that? One more thing that is gonna set this off is I have this rubber baseboard type stuff. That's gonna keep dust and debris from getting in there. I need to cut a three inch hole in the top of the tool bench because my CNC has this vacuum hold down system right here. So the cool thing about this particular CNC is that it can cut below its base. So the CNC is already sitting on top of the bench. All I gotta do is just bring it over and cut that out. I got other videos on making shop furniture. You can check that out here. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.